what up b squad it is me jb and we are here today you guys with let's get into the blogs this is a little crooked well it's straight but it, it it's not center but yeah you guys this is let's get into the blogs this is number um chat i don't know what number we own i think we're on 119 you guys so uh before we go ahead and get into it this is going to be the hot topics for the week um april 6th through april the 12th you guys now before we do get into it if you guys are watching in this video or any other on the channel and you guys aren't subscribed yet then i need you guys to do me a solid favor and stop taking me out on this date and having me pay for it at the end of it you guys know the routine you can do me that favor by liking the video subscribing to the channel turning on your post notifications and um with that out of the way without further ado let's go ahead and discuss what is hot and what is trending this week, you guys? Shall we? All right, you guys. So, what a week this has been, hasn't it? Um. So, the first thing that I want to start up with is the rest in peace, right? This is one that I meant to mention last week, but I completely forgot about it. Lou Gossett, um, you guys, he passed away. Now, when did he pass away is the question. But Lou Gossett Jr., he passed. Oh, this is he. He passed away on March 29th, you guys. So he was 87 years old when he passed. Um, Lou Gossett was known for, you know, works on, on stage um, and, you know, on the big screen and on the stage, right? He left behind. Um, who did he leave behind? I don't know. But yeah, I definitely meant to mention Lou Gossett, last, Lou Gossett Jr. last week, but it slipped my mind. Like there were some stories last week then when I finished doing the video, I was like, damn, you meant to talk about that. I was like, damn, you meant to talk about that, right? And I didn't talk about it. So rest in peace to Lou Gossett Jr. And then this week, we were hit with the news that Orenthal J. Simpson, known as O.J. Simpson, he passed away. I believe O.J. was 76 years old. O.J. passed away of prostate cancer. I think they said he's been battling it for a few months now. And... You know, here's the thing that I want to say when it comes to OJ. I know we as black people, we have the running joke that we always say OJ did it, right? But in the court of law, he was found not guilty. So, and that leads me down this rabbit hole real quick. The one thing that about OJ is since he passed away, they've been talking about everything again, right? They've talked about you know, the, the trial, you know, where he was on trial for the murder of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ronald Goldman. And the interesting thing about that is I remember that time period, but I was so his kids are older than me. His kids are a few years older than I am. I know that much. His kids are like a little bit older than I am, not that much, but they're definitely older than me because when the trial happened for OJ Simpson, I had, I don't think I had even started. I wouldn't even, I don't even think I was in school at the point at that time. I wasn't, I wasn't in school when OJ's trial was going on because at that time my mom was working during the day and I would be at home with my grandmother and so, like, I, like I've always said, my grandmother and I used to watch the soap operas and all that stuff. And I remember that case because my grandmother had this guy that she was dating who I couldn't stand, by the way. But during the time of the O.J. Simpson trial, it was televised on court TV every single day of the week. Like, <laughs> whenever they were in court, it was on court TV, right? And so we watched the trial. And... Looking at the foot, it's like when you think about it, OJ's legacy is not. Yes, he was the juice, you know, but his legacy now is not tied to football. It's not even tied to that Hertz commercial that he did, right? Because that's what my mom said, you know, people knew OJ back in the day for football, but they then really knew him because of that Hertz commercial. And they've showed the Hertz commercial, right? But OJ's legacy is now tied to everything that happened with Nicole, again, Ronald Goldman, and even him, what was that, 2006, 2007, when he went and tried to steal his own memorabilia, 
that's what he went to jail for. Then when that, you know, the thing that always blew my mind with OJ was when he, when he was found not guilty, the fact that that fool was ready to write a book titled, If I Did It, This Is How. I was like, why would you do something so stupid? It just never made sense to me. None of the things that OJ did made sense to me. And speaking of someone, something else that doesn't make sense to me, Caitlyn Jenner, or formerly known as Bruce Jenner, right? So Caitlyn took to Twitter, and I'm on, I've, I've responded to both of Caitlyn's tweets. So I'm about to go to my Twitter real quick, and we're going to pull up the first tweet from that. that God, I cannot stand that woman, or whatever you want to call her. So the first thing from Caitlyn was the fact that um, the bitch tweeted, good riddance, hashtag OJ Simpson. So I tweeted, I quote retweeted Caitlyn and said, here go this problematic hoe, but bitch, didn't you unalive someone? So she responded to, because that was the thing that was under her tweet. People were retweeting her or tweeting her saying, but you took somebody's life as well. So she replies back, says, I know you all think it's cute to compare a fatal car accident with multiple vehicles involved to a brutal M word. But remember, OJ said something to the effect of, I could unalive Nicole and get away with it because I'm OJ Simpson. Let me tell you this as well, Caitlin, you go up so much for the Republican Party and that orange man, that orange man said he could pow pow someone on Fifth Avenue and in the middle of daylight, and he can get away with that. So what are you talking about? Like, but then, and then everybody's coming to her again. And I said, um, sir, ma'am, you took a life as well. So it, a, a, actually, let me repeat it. Um, sir, ma'am, you still took a life. Um, a life, a life was still taken. Kindly do the world a favor and shut the F-U-C-K up. Like Caitlin gets on my nerves. <laughs> You can feel however you want to feel about OJ, right? There are people who still believe that OJ did what he, you know, did it, right? And there are people who felt like he didn't do it. And so it's going to be, it's going to always be that when it comes to the name of Orenthal Simpson, Orenthal J. Simpson, right? And at the end of the day, the man is still deceased he he lost he, he he lost his battle with cancer you can again you can feel however you want to feel about him that you're entitled to your feelings but when you're somebody like caitlin jenner you ain't got no room to talk sis absolutely no room to talk but like i said when it comes to oj when you just literally just sit and think about it like i said he was a great football player but his life his legacy it's not, you won't ever talk, like when it comes down to it, you're never going to talk about his football career. It's going to be, it's going to be a small talking point. You're going to talk about his football career, but then in the same vein, you're going to bring up the case that he, you know, the case. And they've showed the, you know, they've showed the different reactions to it. They show, I forgot that Oprah, I forgot about that back in the day, that her lot, her audience watched it live and you can see the reactions from us and you can see the reactions from right we were people you know we were ecstatic about it right they were not that happy about it and i do feel bad for the simpson you know the brown family as well as the goldman family right i do feel bad for those families because they feel and believe that you know justice wasn't served for their loved ones and i can't take away how they feel i absolutely can't take that away from them and wouldn't even try to so what i what else i want to say that's really all i want to say you know rest in peace to oj you can feel how you want to feel about the man but you can still say rest in peace to him but like i said his legacy his and I just saw an article that said he made his kids sign an NDA before he passed away. And TMZ, TMZ put that he did not make a deathbed confession. <laughs> okay, 
like I don't understand the comparison because they somebody posted that with him and some it was somebody else who passed away that they didn't they didn't do something I forgot who it was I have to go and look at it and find it if I can but I don't remember who it was um but yeah you guys let me know your thoughts and opinions on that let me know your thoughts and opinions on that and then we'll discuss it in the comment section below you guys but uh yeah rest in peace to him man i hope you know i don't know what i hope with oj because here's the thing that i will say right if in fact he was the one that you know did that to nicole and ronald then when he went to meet his maker you know he has to answer for those and he has to you know ex you know he has to answer for those in the afterlife right it, you know we don't have a heaven or a hell to put anybody in so i hope wherever his spirit is i hope it knows some it's it's has some semblance of peace that is all i can say let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section you guys below and we will pause here and we will move forward you guys all right you guys so next up let's get off of you know the depressing stuff also damn it i should have said it in in the in the um well we'll we'll tack this on to the first half also you guys let's say rest in peace to dj mr c you guys um let's see when he passed away mr c so dj mr c he passed away on oh wow he passed away april the 10th and that is my great-grandmother's birthday that is my great-grandmother's birthday uh don't know the call does it say it's currently unknown so we'll if it comes back you know up we'll discuss it at that point in time now we are done with the rest in peace you guys we'll move forward so let's go into some, some congratulations you guys congratulations go out to dawn staley and you know it's so interesting that her name is dawn state her last name is staley because that is my family's last name now i don't know if there is any relation between dawn and my family i do know that her family originated and well i know her mom and dad because i actually looked into it this week and they're from i think it's north carolina it's it's the carolinas i can't remember if it's north or south carolina where she um is a coach at right but i mean southern and you know that the last names that we have are from the slave masters so i i wonder i do wonder sometimes but hey congratulations go out to don staley and the south carolina gamecocks uh, women basketball they are the women's ncaa champions they um they clinched that title last saturday or was it sunday i don't remember because i actually watched the game but i don't remember what <laughs> i think it was last saturday i feel like it was last saturday but they clinched that title it was last Saturday. Congratulations to them, right? The one thing that I do want to say about that is I kind of feel a way about it because the focus has not really been on those young ladies. Even after the game, people were talking about Caitlin Clark. And I was just like, but, and this is no disrespect to her. I don't have anything against her, but she didn't win so why are we discussing caitlin clark like i didn't understand that like i was confused as to why they were talking about caitlin clark has she done a lot for you know the the game absolutely and i'm not going to take anything away from her you know give her her flowers absolutely but we're not going to give her her flowers in this particular moment right here when the flowers go to south carolina and dawn staley we're going to give them their flowers right now. We can talk about Caitlyn at a later date and time. We can definitely do that. The thing that I also want to say when, when it comes down to Caitlyn is it kind of goes to this Emmanuel, that Emmanuel Ancho stuff. 
because you guys remember last week how he doubled, he was talking about, um, you know, Angel Reese, right? He had his comments about Angel, but from the, some, I saw some clips of Caitlyn Carr, right? And Caitlyn can be just as cocky as Angel can be, but there's a, but y'all don't, y'all don't, and she cries, right? But y'all don't villainize her the same way y'all do it to Angel Reese. I'm, an, I'm just going to leave it at that. You know what I'm saying? There could, you know, let me know what you guys think about that. I have my thoughts and my opinions on that, but I'm going to keep it to myself. <laughs> I'm going to keep that, you know, keep that tucked all the way in the back because I don't want to have that conversation right about now. But, you know, if you know, you know, right? But yeah, I absolutely, like I said, um, absolutely, like I said, congratulations to, um, to those young, to those women, um, Don, Don Staley, congratulations to her team. And I, like I said, I will say congratulations to Caitlin, right? Because like I said, she's done a, she, she has done a lot, right? So, cause this, this whole entire, um, NCAA championship she's been the talk and you know this they have done better than the men and I'm happy to see that I'm happy to hear that women's you know I hope that with this it can translate into the WNBA because I don't like the fact that there is a disparity in pay with those women whereas the men get paid millions and, and millions and millions and millions of dollars but the women get paid nothing. And again, like I said before, we have saw it with Brittany Griner. I that was a cautionary tale. I hope that people started to listen. I hope people are starting to make the necessary changes. You know, I just hope so. I hope so. I really do. Um, let me know if you guys watched the championship in the comment section below you guys. And we will pause here and we'll go ahead and move on, you guys. You guys, the next thing that I want to talk about, <laughs> and I don't know how I feel about it, and I don't intend to, you know, give any views to this or anything of the nature. So you guys know that there is a reboot cartoon. I don't even know if you would call it a reboot, but there is a Good Times cartoon, right? And I saw the trailer about uh, two weeks or so ago when it was circulating on social media. Mind you guys, I didn't even know that there was anything. I didn't know that they were trying to reboot um, Good Times. What I will say, there are two big names on this cartoon that I look at them and I have to ask the question of why. What were you thinking? Seth MacFarlane creator of Family Guy, <laughs> Seth MacFarlane and Steph Curry. Those are two, the, those are two big, there are other names that are on there as well. And I can't, I can't remember who those other names were, but there are other names on this, this Good Times reboot. And if you guys know anything about the original show, Good Times, yes, they lived in the ghetto, but they wanted to have a better life. And at the end of it, they got that right. And this cartoon right here, these are, you know, descendants of James and Florida Evans. So that means that their par these, these characters' parents are either JJ, Michael, or Thelma. They're three, they only had three kids. So you're either Thelma's kids, JJ's kids, or Michael's. I'm gonna go with, well, you know, JJ had girlfriends. I don't understand how and why, but <laughs> neither here nor there, right? But um, so you're either one of their either one of their kids, and this cartoon. We're back in this. We're back in the same projects. I was like, how in the hell did they get out of the projects to go back to the projects? And it's when I saw that trailer. It was gang, it was shooting, it was violent, gang violence, it was a talking baby, and the talking baby is, you know, a drug dealer. I was like, 
huh? I, that was really the part that kind of was like the final was definitive no for me seeing the baby it was the baby and I was like you know what even if I wanted to um even if I wanted to support this show I'm not because I don't even know if this is present if this television if this cartoon is supposed to be present day I, I don't know that. Let me take a look and see, because I, I think it's on Netflix. Because it's on Netflix. I think it's on Netflix. Um, I know Bernadette Stannis, a.k.a. Thelma, she spoke. She was on TMZ the other day, and she's not here for it because it's not progressive, and it's absolutely not progressive. It's, 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 what it is, is, is stereotypical. I just want to know whose idea was it to make a baby a drug dealer. I just want to know who who came up with that idea. So I'm I'm about to read something to you guys real quick. So this says Netflix's animated Good Time series flunks the TV re- reboot test. Um, so this is from CNN. It says after the social media back blow that greeted the Good Times trailer, Netflix opted to premiere the show without making it available to critics. But the animated series that dropped April 12th merely underscores the pitfalls of leveraging a familiar title without a clear reason for doing so, yielding an edgy comedy that likely would have come and gone with scant notice without the weight of that name. In addition to the Norman Lear, who to the late Norman Lear who feared considerably better um f- fared considerably better than one than with ooh, let me read that again in addition to the late norman lear who fared considerably better with a one day at a time reboot the roster of producers here includes seth MacFarlane, nba superstar um steph curry the series recreate was created by Rhonda shepherd and carl jones with the latter having worked on the y'all worked on the boondocks come on it says Good Times is hardly the first show to try ca- to try capitalizing on a recognizable title, but the connection has seldom felt more tenuous, and the shift to animation with the wilder flourishes that allows not only invites um, but encourages excess from talking that was it to talking roaches to um, gory violence, making the name play more like a cynical grab for attention. Other than occasional strains of the original music, any similarities pretty much in there with the most outlandish wrinkle involving a central couple's drug dealing baby, Dalvin, an attempt to mock stereotypes that owes a debt to the infant Stewie. See, here's the thing. Even if you want to create something similar to Stewie, Stewie is a genius, right? He hates his mother. He... Like, Stewie doesn't sell drugs. I just, like, why would y'all go? I, I, I knew what they were doing with the talking baby. It was a play on Stewie, but Stewie is, Stewie's not a stereotype. Like, I just didn't understand it. It said the earlier series focused on um, black family, uh, on a black family living in the projects. And that's, again, the basic, the basic template here. It says Reggie Evans voiced by Curb Your Enthusiasm, J.B. Smooth, a cab driver, is identified as the grandson of the original John Evans married to Beverly and his grandfather raising a trio of kids. Um, Obviously, there's a fertile market out there for adult animation and the outlandish exaggerations that go with it. Yet by the time the show gets to an episode featuring an animated Elon Musk taking an unexpected interest in the Evans family or or is tried um, superhero spoof, Good Times has left the original far in the rearview mirror and onboarded the train to Zany Town, raising the obvious question, why call this Good Times? The original show broke ground in 1974 by depicting two black parent, a uh, two black parent family reflecting the clout Lear possessed as a producer at the time. He spun the show off from Maud, which made which itself was a spin-off of All in the Family. Yeah. It says Good Times unfortunately ultimately flunks 
that test on both levels. Um, yeah, this is just not a good look. I don't want, again, with people like Seth MacFarlane and Steph Curry involved in this, how did this see the light of day? I don't understand it. It's, it's a no, a hell nah, an absolute no. No, sir. No, 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 no. We'll pause here. Let me know your thoughts and thoughts and opinions about the Good Times reboot in the comment section. Let me know if you guys have watched it. Um, you guys, let's not support that. Let's for real, for real, you guys. We got to draw the line at something. And I think this is it because this is just not <laughs> this ain't it. I, I have no earthly intentions on watching that, you guys. I'm just being honest with you guys. Won't watch it. If you guys do watch it, let me know what you guys think about it in the comments below. But we'll pause here and we'll move on to the next story, you guys. All right, you guys. So next up, let's talk about Aoki Simmons. <laughs> you guys, when I saw this last week and I'm in a group chat where I, I had originally saw, you know, I think it was a shade room who posted it her and this about the 165 year old man but they didn't show any pictures at the time and i was like oh thank god for not showing no pictures of them then maybe 30 minutes later the picture started surfacing i was like oh my god you see him and her on the beach and then you see him and her kiss and i was like ew this is so weird and so nasty and predatory like i'm gonna ask this question right I just don't understand, and this is nothing against anybody who do it, because the funny thing is I see people saying, get to the back, sis. Yeah, excuse me, I'm like, you know, championing her own to be a sugar baby, and it's like, really? But then y'all just have a whole issue with Drea and that young man that she's with. Like, it's okay for a man to do it, but it's never okay. It's like it's always a double standard when it comes to men and women about certain things, right? I think it's weird overall. She's 21 years old. He's 65 years old. Now, you can be a mature, you can be an old soul, but he's 65. She's 21. What do they have in common besides the one thing that I don't want to think about, but... And it's, it's, it's a visual that I'm trying my, I, I, I don't want a vision. Oh, God, because I couldn't. Now, I'm not going to sit here and, and sit here and hold y'all and lie to y'all, right? Because I've always, I have dated within my, I, I do date within my age bracket, right? But I have dated younger than me, maybe a year, two, or three, right? Nothing, or the, the youngest that I've gone is four years younger than me, right? I've gone four years younger than me. Now, I particularly prefer to go, I've always preferred to date older than me, right? I did, I was in a, it was just, a, it was a situation ship. It was just casual fun. But I think I was 21, 22. It was 21, 22 years old. And this person was, it was a 20 year difference. It was a 20 year difference, so it was 41, 42. But, and even at 21, 22, I was in college and I was a little, I wasn't like completely mature, but I was maturing, to, so to speak, at 21, 22. But I couldn't imagine myself at 21, 22 talking to, dating someone who is 60 years old. Who is old enough to be my grandparent, you know, grandma, grandma, because my grandmother, so my mom, my mom was, you know, in my 20s. How old was my mama? In my tw 21, at 21, my mom was, what year did I turn? I'm trying to think about what year I turned 21, because <laughs> I, well, hold on. I'm currently, how old am I currently? Shit, how old am I currently? Uh, hold on. So my mom was, hmm. My mom was in her 60s. 
I feel like in my twenties, my mom was in her in my twenties. My mom, yeah, she was in her no, she was in her seventies. Yeah, she was in her seventies. So my mom was in her seventies in my tw- in my twenty when I was in my twenties. And then, so yeah, I couldn't imagine dating somebody who was younger than my mom or even in the same age range as some of my aunts and my uncles. Like, I couldn't imagine that, and that wouldn't be something that I could do. Now, this guy that she's dating, he's a restaurateur. I know that probably did a little bit for his business, but not in a, you know, not the best, because I know that they have, you know, broken up, or maybe they're dating in secret at this point. I know Kimora, she spoke out, she put a video up where you know, it was a panda, baby panda, running away from the mama. The mama got the baby panda and took the panda, and then the panda ran off, right? And so, um, I, tw- I said this on the blogs that the apple don't fall far from the tree because we know that when Russell got with Kimura, he was, what, in his 30s, and she was in her late teens, <sighs> I'm glad he didn't say nothing because I'd be like, sir, you damn sure ain't got, I mean, you ain't got no damn room to talk about nothing. Not at all. But um, like I said, it's just, I don't, when I see stuff like that, it just, it makes me think to myself, like, again, you are at a, you're getting up there in age, right? You are, I don't want to say you want to tell into your life, but you i don't want i don't want to say that cuz i don't feel like 65 or 70 is the tail end right but you're you're in a different stage in your life right she is in the beginning stages of her adult years you have lived your life you've experienced you ha- you have different experiences than what she has if you have kids, I'm pretty sure you have. You don't have kids her age. You might have grandkids her age. Like, ooh, I just can't imagine that. I'm sorry, but hey, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below, you guys, and we'll pause here and we'll move forward. All right, you guys. So the next thing that I want to talk about is Eva Marcel. So this is something that I chose not to speak on previously because I have been seeing Eva on the red carpets, and you know. I saw people in the comment section like, oh, even lost a lot of weight. And I was like, and I always think about this every time we see a celebrity and they drastically lose a lot of weight. I just be like, y'all, can we stop talking about people's weight? I mean, one thing about weight, it fluctuates. My weight fluctuates. I can go up. I can go down. I can easily gain a lot of weight and I can easily lose a lot of weight. But some, but it's because I'd be working out, right? Or if I, or if I stop working out, boom, the weight piles on. So I never really spoke on it, and I was thinking to myself, it's like, you guys, have we not learned our lesson from Chadwick Boseman and um, Tracy Braxton? Everybody criticized both of their weights, and they were ultimately sick. What I did say, I, I did comment when I first saw. The pictures of Eva circulating on social media when it ha- when it happened. All the thing I said was about Eva is I hope that you know Eva is okay and that Eva is taking care of herself because you know I was like we don't want a situation like with Chadwick or with um you know Tracy and people still were talking about her weight. I was like come on you guys let's have some kind of empathy for this woman. One, she was going through a divorce, and that's she was talking about going through the divorce, being depressed, and all of that stuff. I was like, exactly. And the comments, she did say she turned her comments off, and I'm glad she did because some of y'all, the the, the crazy thing with social media is people want to be bold and say whatever they want to say, and it's like if you see this person in in person, in in flesh, in the flesh, like face to face. I doubt the I, I doubt the BS that you spew to them in your comment section on Instagram. You once said in their face, Instagram, YouTube, or even in their mentions on Twitter, the shit that you say on social media, you wouldn't have the gall or the balls 
to say it to their damn face. And that's just how I feel. But I'm glad that, you know, she's doing better. And we're going to wish nothing but the best for our good sister, um, Eva. But let me know what you guys thought about it. Now, I don't watch Tamron Hall. I do know also, um, I know that her, her you know, um, her, stu her set, right? They had a fire in her, they had a fire the other day because they had to evacuate them, her and the ladies of The View, they had to evacuate the other day because there was a fire. So I hope everything is okay on that front. But let's pause here, you guys, and move forward. All right, you guys, so the next thing that I want to talk about, and I don't really want to talk about it, but it was something that I saw that I just want to get out of there and discuss it. Gerard, 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 what is, is that how you pronounce his name? Gerard, whatever his name is. Gerard Carmichael. I don't see it for him at all. I think he needs help. That man needs some kind of help, right? So you guys know he recently came out as gay um, some time ago. And the first clip that I saw of him was where he revealed to Tyler, the creator, that he had feelings for him and Tyler didn't reciprocate those feelings. And I was like, wow, way to put your quote unquote best friend on blast. Now, can somebody answer me the question, is Tyler gay or bisexual? Like, I don't, I, I know who Tyler is, but I don't know if he, you know, if that's his ministry, right? But I was, I, I, I was like, okay, you put your friend on blast, but I was like, eh, I don't know if I would necessarily do that if I was, if I were in his shoes. I probably would have said, you know, I told somebody that I had feelings for him and they didn't reciprocate them, but I wouldn't put them on blast. Okay. But then Gerard lost me because he has this, um, he has this reality show, I think is what it is on HBO, what well, is not HBO Max, on Max, right? And... I had no intentions of watching it because I just don't find him interesting, just being honest with you guys. But the, the thing that I'm starting to see now is it's a problem for me because this man, and I want him to go seek therapy for this because this is a problem. I just don't understand anybody who, like, because I've been seeing it a lot lately on social media where this is a, it's a kink for, and... More so, it's really more focused on this one right here. And I'm, I'm going to keep doing this for a reason. I'm going to keep I'm gonna keep doing this, letting you guys know. The focus is right here. It's right here. Not right here. But they are part of this kink. And, and they look like they, oh God, it is something seriously psychologically wrong with this side right here. With this brand new kink that involves this one right here so this one right here it's it's a race bait it's a race play kink for the life of me i don't understand i hate it when i see it in you know p o n i hate it when i see it in there right because it's it's in straight one and it's in on the gay side as well right I hate it when I see it on the straight side when you see a man with a woman and he tells her to say this this N word C word or this N word and I'll be like, huh? Oh yeah, you know, she'd be like with that or I was like, I'd be like, oh my God, who gets off to this? This is nasty then you have the black well i don't say it now you had a black gay man with the white gay men and they be saying the n-word and it's like what's wrong with you that you find that to be a kink your ancestors have to be and i mean have to be rolling over in their graves because why would you want someone to dis like that's disrespect 
And if your partner feels that comfortable with saying that word, then I would look at my partner and be like, are you secretly racist? I'm just saying, it's not something that would be from like, I'm not, I, but see, I, I tip, I stay on the, when it comes to me and dating, I stay on my side, right? Have I, have I dated outside? Well, no, I've never dated outside. I'm, I've never, and I mean, I've never dated outside of my race. I have never. Everyone that I've dated has been black. Now, in the actual sense, yes, I have, you know, done, been outside of my race, right? In the actual sense, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I have definitely, you know, been with Hispanic, white, never Asian, but I've been with black, white, and Hispanic, but never had a relationship, never dated outside of my race, just been actual outside of my race, right? And I don't typically prefer to do that. N nothing against, nothing against, nothing personal, nothing against it. I don't typically prefer to do it, but I have done it, but I prefer to be with black people. I prefer to some be with some, you know, be with this. You ain't gotta be this color. You can be, you know, you can be as light as um, my, you can be as light as my forearm. You can be as dark as my face. You can be as, as, as dark as my facial hair. You can be as dark as that. I don't give a damn, but you're going to be black. <laughs> Just saying, you guys. <laughs> Just saying. Um, what else, you guys? What else? But yeah, let me know what you, if you guys watched it. Tell me it, what you thought about it, and we will discuss it in the comment section. And we'll pause here and we'll move forward, you guys. All right, you guys. So I didn't want to go too political, but I want to talk political just real quick. Did you guys see that video of you know who at that Chick Fil A? And did you notice that everybody in that Chick Fil A happened to be? I was like, motherfucker, I know you uncomfortable. And then them fools in there. <laughs> he ain't said nothing that was funny. But I mean, I guess if y'all got to kiss his ass because he's here, do it. Arizona. So Arizona is banning abortion. And I was like, ooh. You know, speaking of him, you know, he took credit for the Supreme Court. And them, um, you know, overturning Roe versus Wade, right? But now with this whole situation in um, Arizona, and this whole thing about Arizona, he's now saying that they gone, they've gone too far. And I was like, oh, okay. I think that you know the Republicans. I feel like they're going. This is going to be a lose lose year for them. I honestly do. I do. So it says on April 9th of this year, the Arizona Supreme Court issued a 4-2 decision that allowed a law banning abortion on the books since before Arizona became a state to be enforced. This is going to be a this is going so this is going to be something that we definitely see in the political um, political ads this this year especially once we get to I feel like we're going to start seeing the ads by the summer. <laughs> My God, I can. This is a political year, you guys. Oh, Jesus be a fence. Again, like I told you guys, I'm not going to tell anybody how to vote. Just vote for yourself, you guys. Um, That's all I got to say. And then you guys, let's pause here and move forward. So let's talk about the eclipse real quick. Did you guys see it? I did. I did see the eclipse, you guys. Um, so you guys know I'm in Dallas and it was really cool to see it. Um, I went. So what happened is I went into the office this week. And so they had the glasses there. And I was like, my friend was like, she was going to go into the office. I was, I was like, I was thinking about going into the office as well. So we went into the office. We saw it. It was like really, really, really cool. Because um, I took I took pictures of it. I took videos of it. I just thought it was so cool, you guys. Uh, what else? That's it. Did you guys, um, let me know if you guys saw it. Like, I don't know if you guys can see my pictures because that's it. It was like really, really dark. 
took videos and all that kind of stuff. Um, the eclipse, the eclipse. That's really all I got to say about the eclipse, you guys. We'll pause here and we'll move forward. Next up, you guys, let's talk about some tours. So you guys know that this year, everybody's going on tour. So we know that um, I just found out that Maxwell and Jasmine Sullivan are doing the tour. I love me some Jasmine Sullivan, so I got to see her. I like Maxwell too. Maxwell and Jasmine Sullivan, Megan Thee Stallion, Usher, SWV and Escape, um, and now Missy Elliott, Sierra, and Busta Rhymes. So I was wondering, because you guys know Busta had a tour that, he, that nobody really knew about until he canceled it. <laughs> so I was wondering, I was like, is that why Busta canceled that tour? Is that why Busta canceled the tour? So, ooh, y'all, we gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun summer and fall. I definitely can say that. Like, I am looking forward to all the tours. I know my best friend and my niece, they're going to be going to see, um, Janae Iko, because I think she's doing a tour, because my best friend was like, I'm, she was talking about going to see Janae Iko. I was like, girl, to be honest with you, I don't know much about Janae. I don't know much about Janae, but, um, <laughs> and then it's in Fort Worth, and I was like, ooh, girl, no. I don't do Fort Worth. Mm -mm. A little too hood for me. A little too hood for me. But let me know if you guys are going to be going to see any of these concerts, you guys in the comment section below. And I think that's all that we got, but I have one more story that I'm gonna briefly talk about because when it happened, I didn't understand it and I still don't understand it today. But let's pause here and wrap up, you guys. All right, you guys, so to wrap up Hot Topics, let's talk about this stuff with Glorilla versus JT and, um. Glorilla versus JT and JT versus Carisha. And honestly, you guys, I didn't understand any of it. I really, it first started with JT and Glorilla because I know Glorilla put out a song with Megan Thee Stallion and I know she has a line in the song that I guess Glorilla didn't like something about slapping her or something to that effect. And they were going back and forth with each other. And I was just like, girl, what in the hell is going on here, right? Then you got Carisha and Jay. And I mind you, it was just Glorilla would tweet something. JT would come and, and quote retweet her. Then J Glorilla would come back and quote retweet that. And then JT would come back and quote retweet that. I was like, well, y'all just get this shit off of social media. Like, why don't y'all DM each other? Then the next day or, or or a few days later, JT and Carisha are going back and forth with each other. I was like, girl, what is going on here? One, y'all are group members, so don't y'all have each other's numbers? Text each other. Call each other. But either way you, it go, get this shit off of social media. I, I, and I feel like, you know, that's going to hurt them in the long run because... People are going to probably be like, oh, remember that time when Carisha said this? Or remember that time when JT said this? And then ultimately they ended it by saying, oh, I love you. I, I love you more. I love you, Jatavia. I love you more. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't understand any of it. If you guys caught that beat, that, 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 that back and forth with those four, well, three. JT, Carisha, Glorilla, and I think even Saucy got into it at some point. If y'all know the, 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 the deal with that, let me know in the comment section below because I ain't understand it at all. And also, I want to leave I want to leave on this one note. Prayers up to everybody in New York because I talked about the fact that the ladies of The View and, Sun, and Tamara Hall show had to evacuate because they had a fire. Also... There was an earthquake last week, so I hope that, I, you know, that earthquake happened after I did my video last week. So I hope that everybody is OK. Now, I know Sunny went on the view and said that, you know, what she said in global warming or something, whatever she was talking about with the eclipse and the, the, the earthquake. I'll give you that with the earthquake, but not the not the eclipse, Sunny. And y'all, if you don't know anything about me, like I told what well, you guys know, I told you guys I watched the view every week. I love Sonny, but when Sonny is wrong, I got to call my girl. I'd be like, Sonny, girl, you're wrong. But that is it, you guys. 
been on her for far too long. Um, you know, I probably should have, I probably should have done that JT, Carisha, Yaw, and um, Glorilla shit earlier this week. I'm going to get, like I said, you guys, we're going to start doing that where I take some stories that, the stories that I don't really 100% care that much about. We're going to combine them into one video and put it out on Wednesdays. And that's just how it's going to work. And then on Fridays, we'll, Fridays or Saturdays, we'll still do regular Let's Get Into The Blogs, you guys. But, um, yeah, that's it, you guys. Be sure to let me know what you guys thought about the topics that we discussed this week. Be sure to like the video. Stay safe out there, you guys. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Be blessed. And I'll see you guys in the next one, you guys. We do this every single week. Same time, same place, same channel, same host. You guys, I know. Shut up. Don't say it. JB, we don't do this every single week. We try to. Damn it. We try to. But um, I'll see you guys. And I'm not I'm not going off on y'all, but I love you guys and I'll see you guys later. So uh if you guys did not, so yeah, if you guys I'm recording this after my Ready to Love live. So if you guys didn't see the live, go check it out. And also I will go live one day this I'm gonna go live Monday. But I'm still going to do my review for Real Housewives of Potomac, but we will go live to discuss Potomac as well. And I'll see you guys for Potomac as well as I still have to do Chase and Dallas. I have to record that at some point today and upload that and um, do the Potomac review tomorrow. And then we have to do Summer House Martha's Vineyard. And I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye, guys. You know what, I hate this so badly.